Hey, gardeners. Amy here with Garden Up. I have just bought myself a garden cart because I feel like it's high time that I had one of these. And so I thought I would unbox it and build it on camera so that you can see what it is as well. So every year, about once or twice a year, I end up borrowing one of these from either my mom or one of my workers who happens to have one, just to get my table and tent and things uh, up to the garden expo from the truck. But that's all I ever need them for. Um, but this year, I thought between that and Lily just started selling Girl Scout cookies, we're going to need to like cart a bunch of cookies all around the neighborhood and everything. It's high time I got myself one of these because they're very useful. I just haven't used them because I haven't had one. Uh, but you can use it for everything from pulling a lot of uh, potted plants to moving debris to just your tools to your kids, whatever. They're very useful, just like any typical wagon. Um, <clears throat> but the cool thing about these is that the sides come down. You can either have the sides up or the sides down so that if you need like a wider flatbed, you can just do that, um, which makes it really handy. That's real handy for debris and for tables. Like I, like I said, I've used these for my uh, booth setups at the expos and various fair events and things. And so I would just pop the sides down, set the tables on top, and we could pull the tables. It was really great. So that's why I like these so much. Shopping for it was very interesting. I you know, started with just checking out what was available on my phone, just like most of us do these days. And I found a wide variety of carts, anywhere from about $100 all the way up to four or $500. And for the most part, they are about the same. The biggest difference is size and how the sides come off. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. I started at Northwest Seed and Pet, which is my local garden center. Um, they had this one, and it was $280. And I had just seen a cart, very similar, on, at Ace online for just a little over $100. And I thought, I don't really want to spend $280. So I did some shopping. I went to the general store. They didn't have any, uh, which is also an Ace. That's why I thought I'd go there. And then I went to the Ace that had the one in the ad that I saw. And when I got up to that section and I saw the floor model, I thought it was a miniature, like, shrunk down model. <laughs> it wasn't. It was really only about a foot and a half by two or three feet. Tiny little thing. And on top of that, the sides didn't fold down. They came off. And I know myself well enough to know that if it comes apart and, like, you have to set it aside, it's going to get lost. If it's not me that loses it, it's going to be one of my workers. It's going to get lost, so I'm not going to have the sides for very long. So I thought, never mind, and I went back to Northwest Seed and Pet, and I bought the $280 one, and here it is. <laughs> so um, this one, the sides can come off completely if you want to. They're held on by cotter pins, but mostly, and the really good thing about this is they fold down, which is what I wanted. Okay, so I'm gonna bust this open and build it. We're gonna see how long it takes. Um, I have a variety of tools with me. I've got my, my tool bag. <laughs> got my tool bag. And then I also have some pink spray paint because let's face it, forest green is boring. Let this be a note to the people who design stuff like this. <laughs> green is boring. Pick some different colors, please. I, I will pay a couple dollars more to have different colors, okay? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to spray paint mine pink because I like doing that. Okay, <clears throat> let's bust it open and see what's in this thing. Some assembly required. <laughs> I like actually that this comes in lots of pieces because it'll make it real easy for me to paint. There's the sides, part list, assembly, instruction, and part list. This is everything. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> it's an exploded diagram, and I hope that's not all that's in here, because good Lord. <laughs> it's going to take all morning. Here's the handle. Never come back to that. There's the fronts, front and back. Wheels. Here's the part that attaches to the handle. And front axle, back axle, and that part. Okay, cool. A 
bag of bolts and cotter pins and other things. And the base. Cool. <clears throat> and yeah, that this um that is all the assembly instructions that this comes with. So yeah, I think I will do the whole thing on camera so that there is uh, something of an actual assembly instruction out there online somewhere. <laughs> first though, I'm gonna go paint this because that would be the first step. The first thing I'm gonna do is take off these handles because I actually don't want them painted. For one thing, it could gum up the um, their ability to operate and for another I just I actually like this uh, gold color but seems I'm gonna need a wrench for that righty tidy lefty loosey if you haven't heard that before I think most of us have Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things here, a um, little bit unusual. I'm going to pile the pieces on top of each other because this expanded metal grid thing, a lot of paint is going to get wasted. So at least this way, one pass will actually do two things at once. In fact, I'm just going to pile them all. Why not? gonna have to do a few passes anyway this hopefully will waste less paint now obviously if you like the green it's a nice powder coat finish like it's a good quality so if you like it or you don't care you could totally skip this step this is just my personal preference because I'm picky You are going to paint. Remember that you need to get several different angles, different directions. I'm going to move things around a little bit so that I get different spots in every pass. Also with spray paint, always make sure that you're outside or at least in a well-ventilated area because you don't want to breathe this stuff. It's not good for you. Forgot how dirty this area is. I usually just spray paint tools so it doesn't matter, but since the painted area is touching the ground, it's already picking up some dirt and stuff. So I put a piece of cardboard underneath to keep the dirt and weeds and things off. I'm actually not going to do the bottom of this because it's never going to be seen. But I am going to make sure to do the inside and the outside. Eh, not bad. When my mom bought her cart, she spray painted it lavender because purple's her favorite color. And I just absolutely love the fact that one, nobody can mistake that it's hers. And two, uh, it's beautiful. And it's been several years and hers still has the same vibrant color as when she painted it. So. I think it's well worth the six or seven bucks to get yourself a can of your favorite color of spray paint because why not? It makes a cart yours. So yeah, I think it was definitely the right choice to layer the pieces because I didn't even have to do anything to this bottom one. It's almost completely painted. I've got a couple of little sections and then the outside that I'm gonna to have to do, but that's it. Uh-oh. 
can of paint may not be enough. One can of spray paint wasn't quite enough, so I'm going to use one more that was open from last time we sprayed our tools. By the way, this is Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer, and the color I use is Gloss Berry Pink. Like I said, it's the same pink that I used to paint all my tools and, and everything else that I want to advertise is mine. I think the painting's done. We're going to let this sit in the sun and for a little bit and dry. I'll come back in about half hour. All right, so while I was waiting for the paint to dry, baby woke up from her nap and so we had lunch and all those things. And now we are ready to get back to it. And I'm going to try to build a cart with a baby running around the yard and demanding my attention. <laughs> Alright, so first, trying to make heads or tails out of these instructions because they're not really instructions. What it is is an exploded diagram. It's also called an isometric. It's got a few other names for it. But the bottom line is this is a parts list and an exploded diagram of what the thing should look like when it's done. It's not an instruction of assembly. Let's get right down to it. All right, so I'm laying out all the parts and making sure I have everything, laying out the little pieces on this piece of cardboard. These are the handles that came off of the sides when I painted them. Now I realized as I was picking them up that they are actually different. Some of them are angled this way and some are angled this way. So you will want to make a note of that when you take yours off if you paint um, because It'll make it easier to put back on. I'm pretty sure I know which way these go, but we'll figure that out in the last step when we put the sides on. Okay, so parts list. We have a base. We have two side racks. We have two front and rear racks. One front draw bar. This is piece number four. Piece number five is the handle. Piece number six are four wheels. We have four wheels. Piece number seven is the front bracket. That is this piece, the front bracket, which goes right on top of this. Okay, and then piece number eight is the rear bracket. That's this. Then we have eight B pins. Now I've always called these cotter pins, just big ones. I might be wrong on that though. I'm thinking it's because they kind of sort of resemble a bee. Anyway, we need eight of those, and I have eight of those. Okay, then we need M8 by 15 bolts. We need eight of those bolts. So I'm hoping that's these, which are also attached to their nuts and washers. Eight, so I have eight bolts. This part makes no sense. <clears throat> so we're going to assume that these are the M8 bolts, but there's also a different number of washers and nuts and all kinds of things. So those are the bolts. Next is pin. These are the cottering pins that go in the wheel. One for each wheel, plus one for the handle. So there are five of these cottering pins. M8 washer, we're supposed to have nine, so my guess is that's these washers plus the one that came on this bolt. M16 washer, we're supposed to have five, so that's these. These are the M16s, the big ones. M8 nut, we're supposed to have five M8 nuts which is the part that makes zero sense. I have eight nuts here, a ninth one there. Maybe it's these that already came assembled. I don't know. Then we're supposed to have one M8 by 58 bolt. That's this one. And one plastic connector. So according to this, we actually have a whole bunch of extra nuts. But, you know, whatever. We'll figure it out. Okay. Now, what I've done is I've placed the base upside down back in the box. And my reason for this is because if I drop any washers, 
or nuts or bolts or anything. I don't want to lose them in the grass. So this way they'll get caught in the box and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and move the wheels, readjust the camera and then get to building. All right. I hope, I hope you all can see this. Okay. Without too many harsh shadows. It's a really gorgeous sunny day, quite warm and everything. Okay. So I'm going to start with the rear assembly, the rear wheels, and I'm going to put them on this side. It doesn't matter which side is front. It's uh, it's symmetrical. So front and back makes no difference. So I need the rear assembly, which they call the rear bracket, piece number eight. It's going to fit right here with these holes. Okay. And it's put in there by nuts, bolts, and washers, which are pieces 12, 13, and 10. So that's the M15 bolt, the M16 washer, and 12 is the uh, you guys know I'm not crazy here. Okay, here's the call out that says which bolt it is, number 10, M8 by 15 bolt. And then up here is the call out that says the washer and the nut, 12 and 13, which is the M8 washer and the M16 washer. What? Anyway, it's a nut and a bolt with a washer in between. And the washer goes on the nut side. So nut, bolt, washer. They have the nut. I don't know if this part makes a difference, but they have the bolt coming through from the inside out. That's the part I don't know if it makes a difference. You could put the bolt going the other direction and then the washer. The flat side of the nut goes towards the washer. The curved side goes out. And this little uh, rubber piece on the inside is supposed to help keep it in place as well as keep water out so it doesn't rust and stuff. That's the theory. I don't know if it works. So we're just going to do it finger tight for a start. To tighten these, if you have socket wrenches, that would be the easiest, but I do not. So I'm just taking two pliers, grab one end and hold it, like that, and the other one comes like this, and we just move them both to the right, which means we're going to go this way. It's going to seem like opposite directions, but it's actually the same. What's interesting here is that this piece is actually far narrower than the space. So as I tighten this, I am bending it out, which is what's making these so hard to tighten. Okay, next is the wheels, and you're going to need a wheel and a cotter pin, and that's it, by the looks of it. No, excuse me, the M16 washer. Now with the wheels, you're going to want the little tube thing where you fill it with the pressure. You're going to want that out, because if you put it on the inside, one, it's not going to fit right, and two, you're not going to be able to fill the tires if they ever get low on pressure. So, this is real easy. You put the wheel on. Then you put one of these washers on, and then you put one of the cotter pins on. Okay, washer and the pins. I could be wrong on this, but what I think these are supposed to do is they act like brads, where you, you know, you stick them through paper and then you bend them in either direction. Usually cotter pins just go over like around a piece of metal and there's a little bend up here that holds it in place, but that is not here on this one. So it's going to go up and then you're going to need pliers to bend it. One side, one direction, 
the other side the other direction. out, washer, pin. There we go. And that's it for the rear assembly and now the front. Okay. So for the front assembly, it starts the same way. You use the front bracket and you put it in right next to the holes. This one's actually the right size. It's a little snug and it fits right in those holes. Then you're going to take four bolts, nuts, and washers and put them through in the same way as we did before. I do like the little blue pieces on the inside of the nuts. I can tell that, so I can only finger tighten it to that point. And I don't remember if I said earlier, I know I said that it's designed to keep water out and stuff, but it'll also lock it in place so it doesn't um, come loose over time. And that's very apparent when you can't um, screw it any tighter. You need tools to get it tighter. It means it's not going to come loose either, at least I hope that's the case. We'll see in a few years if that actually happens. There we go. Here's where the difference is between the front assembly and the back. Now we're going to take this piece and put it down through here. Okay, this is the front draw bar, and then it has number 13, which is an M16 washer. That's one of the big washers, and 11, which is a pin, and those go up here. So that might be easier to assemble later. No, it won't. No, it absolutely will not. <laughs> this is going to be easier to do right now, upside down. Okay, so this... Handlebar assembly goes down through the hole, washer, pin. Okay. Now we have to tighten the pin. You can just turn the draw bar in order to uh, turn the pin. Makes it easier to bend versus trying to move your pliers. Pins nice and tight. I find it kind of ironic that this whole thing is being held together by a pin, but okay. I'm not the engineer. Okay, here we go. Then I'm gonna put the wheels on, and then we can flip it over and put the handle on. Hopefully you can see this okay. I know the shadows are a bit harsh. Um, okay, this last part is pretty simple, although there are a few ways to put it together, so I want to make sure to explain. There are two sets of holes in this handlebar, one going this way and one going this way. Well, what's the difference? The difference is the orientation that you want, the handle itself. So you could put it on this way and have the handle be this way, which is actually a little bit more ergonomic, so that's kind of cool. Or you could put it this way, which is standard, traditional, and typical. Um, 
I might actually try out the ergonomic route. Because you could change your mind on this, I think, if you decide you don't like it. You just have to undo the, the little lock nut thing. Okay, so how this works is you have this piece, which is called the plastic connector. Okay, it goes in between here, and this hole lines up with these holes. And then the handle goes in as well, and whichever set of holes you want lines up as well. So everything lines up together. I think, yeah, I'm going to put it on this way. So we're going to have that, and then put it in there. I'm going to have to fold it. Maybe take the nut off the bolt before you get this far. Okay, nut and washer are there. Then I'm going to take this big bolt, which is called the M8 by 58 bolt. Okay, I'm pretty sure, and again, I could be wrong on this. I'm not a mechanic or an engineer or anything, but the second number, the, the numbers refer to the size. M8, it means 8 millimeters wide. 58 is 58 millimeters long. Now, I don't know if that's including the head, not including the head, whatever. I don't know. But that's what this one's called. So that's how you tell the difference between the different bolts. There. Got it. Okay. This is the direction I want. Bolt is all the way through. On go the washer and the nut. Same direction as before finger tight as much as you can, and then hold this on and tighten it. I'm going to be here a minute. There's about an inch of slack i got to take out. Okay, there we go. We are done with the wagon part. Now we just need to put the sides back on. This is pretty simple. You just have to make sure they're going on in the right direction. This is where you need your B pins. Now, the loop part where the pin goes through has to line up here. This is backwards, okay? This is correct. So when you fold it up, the hinge part of this is on the outside, and this is where the cotter pin goes. So you just take the pin, easy peasy, slide it right through there. That's all there is to putting these sides on. Okay. Well, this is nice. There's actually enough space down here for it to go all the way down. I was a little worried about the shape of this, because usually there's a dip right here in the front so that it can go around the handle, but it actually kind of almost just fits on top. So that's clever. Let's put the other sides on. Okay, last, these little hook pieces. Okay, you'll remember I said there was one bending this way and two bending this way. There is a little notch on the inside of each bend that is supposed to go down. How this works is they fit loosely into this uh, little bracket hinge thing and then when you want the sides up you fold them up and you put the pins down so the one they should bend toward the cart if you were to put the other direction on your pin would bend away which would catch on things and you don't want that So it's bending in towards the wall, not away from it. And that's how you know you put it back in the right spot. So I'm going to assemble it. So I'm going to put the walls up, and then I'm going to screw on the washer and the nut. And like I said, we don't have to worry about those being tight. In fact, you don't want them tight or it won't work. Two 
just tight enough to get the blue stuff on. That's all. Otherwise, you won't be able to fit this piece in. has a little bit of a problem. There is a bubble of paint that is keeping them apart and it's their paint not mine. <laughs> okay well there it is. Well that's it that's how to assemble this thing. Grand total time it took was about two and a half hours that included painting at least a half hour break to eat and get the baby up and stuff and then tend to her while I was building as well as fiddling with the camera and talking to it. Without any interruptions and without painting you could probably assemble this in about 45 minutes. Maybe an hour or a half hour if you're really handy with tools and can understand these kinds of schematics. Um, so that's how to build it. Now let's make sure it works. Nice big smile. Is that fine? You like it? Yes. Yes. Mm. Oh, bum. What do you think? Pretty good stuff? Not bad. Oh, I should have a bigger one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Do you want the handle? Yeah? Okay, Miss Assistant. What do you think? Does it pass your inspection? Yeah. So here's something I just noticed on this that I don't think I would have seen from the packaging. This side, uh, I don't even know what you'd call this, the, the edging here, is coming up about an inch above the bed part. So if I'm gonna put something on here that's wider than this itself, it's gonna get caught on this and actually be lifted up, which kind of defeats the purpose of putting the sides down to begin with. So that's a design flaw, I think. Um, everyone that I've seen before now, this piece goes down. I'm fairly certain anyway, but I'll, I'll look more um, now that I'm aware of this, but we'll see if we can, I can still put a table on it. Okay. So yeah, obviously I can put a table on it. It's just sitting up on that edge, which I don't love. My turning ability with this piece is a little bit limited, but that's actually typical with the front down for any of these carts. I could put this up and lean it that way and then still have full mobility again. Do you like my new wagon? Yeah. <laughs> we gotta go sort your Girl Scout cookies. My final thoughts on this garden cart are I, I think it was well worth the money. I think it's a good quality cart. Um, I've had a few weeks now to play around with it. I really love the, that you can have the handle in both directions. I think that right there is an excellent feature that I was not expecting and I'm happily excited that that was included. Um, I think that the instructions were nonsense. 
<laughs> Not because I can't read schematics. I can read them just fine, but to call them instructions is a little silly when they weren't instructions. There was nothing instructional about it. Um, and I mean, there were mistakes even on that simple schematic. So that was a little bit of nonsense. Uh, but the cart overall, it was easy to assemble and I think it's a very good quality. The, the lip coming up, yeah, I, I, it makes, it kind of makes sense because it'll hold, like if you have the sides down, it'll still hold things in. But if I want to hold things in, why wouldn't I just have the sides up? So that's why I'm still a little bit confused about why this comes up. One more thing I noticed about this is I had it outside and it rained one time uh, and water got in between these two layers of metal here. And when I poured the water out, it actually came out orange and rusty. So I can, I can definitely tell this is not a cart that you can leave outside. Uh, it needs to be stored under cover where it won't get wet because if one day of water sitting in here was enough to rust it, that, uh, that's going to get ruined quick if it's left outside. <clears throat> and I'm not even sure what was rusted. I thought it was all painted. So there must be the metal that's, that's inside here. If it was painted after the fact, that metal wouldn't have um, been treated. So it's completely open to the elements. So thanks again for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and it was valuable to you, make sure to hit the like button. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so that you'll get more gardening content in your video feed every week. And on that note, everybody, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the garden.